Hello everyone and welcome to the first guided weapons tutorial as part of this A10C2 tank killer series and today we're going to be looking at the laser bombs, looking at how to employ these with a targeting pod and for practice I'd suggest going for the small warhead option in this mission, I'll put the link uh, to the mission in the description. The employment of larger warhead bombs is exactly the same you just get more of them on the small warhead option, and so you need to reset less often. Okay, and as normal, I'm going to click fly and then go to active pause, so we can take our time to line things up. So for employing guided weapons, we've got two very important components. The weapon itself, which we're going to need to set up, and the targeting part. So first things first, let's go and set up our weapon profile. To do that we go down here to the DSMS page, you can see we've got a total of 12 GBU-12 laser guided bombs, you can click profile on the top, scroll down to GBU-12 and then click view profile. Here we've got some similar options to what we saw previously with the unguided bombs, we can set whether they're single, pairs, ripple single or ripple pairs. I'll just be doing this as single as that is really what you're most likely going to want to do with laser guided bombs. Equally you can change between the armament on the nose, tail or both. I normally just leave that on nose slash tail. Importantly over here we've got the default weapon mode and I almost exclusively use this on CCRP delivery. That is continuously computed release point. This is a different mode to what we've seen previously and I'll show you how to use that today. You can also go to change settings. We can see here we've got a large number of settings here. Some we can recognize from previous options. We've also got important options here of auto laser on or off, and the laser time. Now for the first bomb, I'll be demonstrating that with auto laser off, so we'll do a manual lasing delivery. But then for a second pass, I'll show you with auto laser on. For now though, we can just save the active profile, and then go back to the status page to see our loadout there. Now very importantly, we have the laser codes written on the weapon station. As you can see here, 1688. That is our currently selected code on these weapons. So they'll be looking for a laser of that frequency. If you want to change that frequency, you can do that through the inventory menu here select the desired station. You need to confirm that it is indeed a GBU-12. If you forget what it is, the last entered thing will be here. So we've got GBU, this is a GBU-12. And then if we wanted to change the laser code, we could do so here. So for example, let's say I want to change this to 1513. I can plug that in on the CDU and then press next to a laser code. This can be useful to do if you've got multiple different planes all operating in the same area and you don't want to get things confused, but generally it's easier just to leave it on the default 1688. So that's what we'll be doing today. You can then click load to save this or load symmetry mode, which will also save that to the mirroring station. Then just as before, return to the status page. Once weapons are set up, what we want to make sure is that our master arm here is in the up position, the laser arm is also in the up position, and the TGP is in the up position. If you are just taking off, the TGP will take a couple of minutes to load up, and so make sure you do activate your TGP before arriving on station. To see our TGP, we can come over to here. On the right MFCD, if you have the TGP selected, this will display the targeting pod's camera. You can change between air-to-air -air and air-to-ground mode here. 99% of the time, you want to be in air-to-ground mode. So there we go. We've got our 
camera, it's activated here and is pointing ahead of us. We can see where it's pointing with this little diamond here on our HUD. That is where the TGP is pointing and it will continuously update. Now we can see here on the TGP screen that we've got the laser currently set to 1688 matching our inputted laser codes here, so that's fine. If I wanted to change that, I could do so by clicking Control in the top. And I've got laser code entered here, and so I could just do the same as before, say 1513, and then put next to the L, and that'll search, or that'll shine a laser of that frequency. Just put that back to the default for now. Got other options here which we can look at uh, later, but importantly over here we've got the laser latch command. can turn this on or off. I like having this on, in which case the laser is a toggle. Press the laser button once to turn it on, press it again to turn it off. If you have this off, instead you will have to hold it. Once you're happy with these settings, we can go to return. So to practice using the TGP then, first we're going to make the TGP as soy. To do that we press the coolie write long command. You can see this is soy as this is boxed in with the green and there is no longer a not soy message. When the TGP is soy, your SLU controls will move the TGP camera around. We also have the TGP boat switches in the forward position. That will be a black hot infrared sensor. In the aft position, it's a white hot infrared sensor. And in the center position, it is the CCD uh, camera. You can also tap China Hat forward short command that will zoom in on the little boxed area and tap it again to zoom out. You can also press the data management switch up and down commands to alter the optical zoom. And so we can find a object on the map, zoom in with China hat forward and zoom right in using the optical camera to get a good view. While we're looking at this, there is also a, a set of changes you can do to make the infrared camera a little easier to look at. And that is by altering the gain and the level settings. So as we can see here, as I push the rockers next to gain up and down, it's changing essentially the contrast. If I push next to where it said gain, this now changes to the level settings. And generally you just want to keep altering these until you find one that is good for the current conditions. There is no one good uh, configuration and you may need to change during a mission as lighting quality changes. For now though, we can get away just leaving that on its default. So we need to find our targets to drop our bombs. And the first thing to do is get the vague area your target is in. Normally this is going to be as a mission waypoint, or it might be given to you by a full JTAC. Either way, we need to slew our sensors to point in that general direction. So for this mission, we have a waypoint set in the general target vicinity. So first thing, we need to select that waypoint as our steer point. To do that, we select the HUD as SOI by pushing Cooley up short command. Then we push the data management switch up short command. And there we go. We have now selected waypoint one and we've got the little boxed area highlighting where that is. Now I could go over to my targeting pod, manually slew that around so that the diamond on the HUD goes over the little box. There is a much easier way to do this 
And that's using the China commands. If you push China hat forward long command, it will slew all active sensors to the current uh, speed. And if you push China after long command, it will set the active waypoint as your current speed. So by using those in combination, we can quickly zoom to the target area. And so now if we look down at our CGP, we can see the targets here. We have some trucks on the move, and we've got some stationary APCs. Let's make things easy for ourselves to begin with and target one of these APCs. So we want to move the tracker over where we want the bomb to fall. Then we've got the option of deploying the weapon in area or point track mode. Area will track a certain area on the ground. Point track will try and stay fixed to a high contrast object that it can see. In this case, it doesn't particularly matter since we're shooting at a stationary target. But generally, if I'm aiming at a stationary target, I'll put it in area track mode. Now, either way, ideally, you want to set that point as your speed. And you can do this at any time by pushing the target management switch up long command. That is now set as our current speed. What I can do, though, is to make sure I get the ranging information accurate, I can turn on the laser before setting the speed. To turn on the laser, I push the nose wheel steering button. I can see that that is successful because the L is now flashing, indicating the laser is firing. Equally on the HUD, I get a flashing L to indicate it is firing. Now if I push the target management switch up command, that will still set that point as speed, but now it will have the lasers ranged correctly. This can be really useful if you're, say, targeting a tank. Make sure that you do actually target where the laser is pointing, not uh, the target behind it. Now that we've got our laser set up, we just need to do a couple of quick checks. One is to make sure that the targeting pod is set to laser mode. You can see that here we have LSR, so this is the standard laser. I can either push this USB next to this to change it to IR, or push data management switch right to cycle modes. And I have three overall modes. Laser, which is your laser designator, IR, which is an infrared beam which will be visible as a continuous column through night vision sensors. Really good for pointing things out to people who are not data linked to you. Or both, which functions as both. Whenever dropping laser guided munitions, you want to be on laser or both. If you try and use IR, it simply will not function. You will get a laser error if you have set up auto laser, and the weapon simply will not track. With our TGP setup, we now want to make sure that our weapons are selected. So let's make the HUD soy change to any uh, mode by selecting the master mode uh, button and pressing that until it's on any mode that is not guns mode. Then push data management switch right command and that will bring up our GBU-12. Equally, I could have selected the individual stations down here by clicking on them. Now we've got some new symbology on the HUD. Similar to the CCIP release, we've now got a vertical line, but this is a solid vertical line. This is still the weapon full uh, marker. And we've got what looks like the CCRP, or CCIP reticule there, but this is the CCRP reticule. Very similar, but it's no longer pointing at where the bomb is going to fall. Instead, it's just latched to a lower position of the HUD, and what we want to do is fly the plane 
so that the pipa in the center of that circle is on the vertical line. As we get close to the target, a small number will appear at the top of that, starting at 20 seconds, which will tell us our time until weapon release. We then fly steadily until that goes down. Eventually that number will start to drop and make its way down the vertical post. From about 5 seconds away from release, we press and hold the weapon release button. As the falling symbol goes through the center, we will get a flashing marker on the HUD, and that will release the button. Since we're on manual release mode, what we will then need to do is activate our laser using the nose uh, wheel steering button. And we need to fly the airplane in such a way that the TGP can maintain line of sight on its current target. So let's run through that and see how we go. So I'm going to unpause it and fly. Again, making sure these two lines are vertical, making sure the pipa is over the vertical line extending from the target, and then just keeping an eye on the top of my reticule there for when the weapon release this countdown starts. Just making small adjustments as I go. So you have slightly drifted off, and so I just want to bring that pipper back onto the vertical line. You can fly at really any angle you want, though a good idea just to keep it in level flight. You can see there we're now 15, 13, 12 seconds from release. As we get closer, that will begin to descend. I press and hold weapon release. As it falls through the pipa, it will flash, and that's weapon release. You can double check there, the weapon is gone. And then I press the nose wheel steer button to fire the laser. In the bottom of the TGP, we can see where the counter is slowly ticking down, and that's the bomb time to fall. There we go, perfect shack on the target. Now I can just disable the laser by pressing the nose wheel steer button again and extend away from the target area, give myself some distance to make my next pass. Now exactly when you want to turn on the laser is really a matter of pilot preference and the conditions at the time. The longer you have the laser active for, the more your bomb will be able to steer towards that target. So if you think you've really messed up a drop and you've not been near where that vertical line is, you can certainly compensate by turning on your laser early. I believe the downside is some modern vehicles do have anti-laser protection systems that will give them an alert. I don't know if that's implemented in the game. Really, I find lasing pretty much as soon as you drop the bomb is normally good enough. Though if you think you've got a pretty accurate drop, you can certainly get away with only lasing, say, 5 seconds from the target. So we've got a good distance away, so I'm going to turn around now, and then we'll set up the automated laze run, and we'll try and aim for one of the moving targets this time. So just nicely come around, put ourselves back in level flight, and activate pause. So this time we're going to do a run with the automatic lasing, so we need to make some changes to our weapon profile. So we go to profile, select the GBU-12, go view profile, everything here is fine, but if we go to change settings, we now want to click this rotary next to auto laze. That turns the auto laze function on, so now when I drop the bomb, the laser will activate automatically without my need of any input. That just helps take off some of the workload on the pilot, so you can concentrate on keeping the TGP pointing where it is, and flying evasively if you need to. 
Now you can leave the laser time zero, in which case the laser will activate immediately upon weapon drop. Or you can enter a time in seconds, which it will activate the laser uh, when the bomb full time reaches that point. So for example, if I put in two zero on the scratch pad, put laser time here, the laser will now automatically turn on 20 seconds before bomb impact. Don't worry about setting this too high. If this is above the bomb's uh, total full time, the laser will just immediately come on. Generally, you want to make sure this is at least five seconds so that your bomb does have some time to make any adjustments that it needs. Against moving targets or poorly dropped bombs, you want to have this a little bit higher. For now, we can save that and go back to the profile page. So now let's make our TGP site and find one of the moving targets. So we can zoom out a little bit and we can see your targets here. Let's just aim for one in the middle of the group. If you want to track a moving target, you want to set your tracker to point. To do that, we press the target management switch up short command. It says point on the bottom and it will try and lock on to a high contrasting object as it's done here. It's picked up that tank, that truck. We then want to make sure that the targeting pod's line of sight is set to the current speed. And to do that, we hold target management switch up long command. So now that's done, our bomb is pointing us towards dropping on this particular target. Otherwise, our approach is going to be pretty much exactly the same. So I will unpause, fly to put the pipper on that vertical line, try to keep vaguely level flight, occasionally checking to make sure the targeting pod is still pointing at our desired target. So there we go, 20 seconds from the target. At the top of the bomb full line, we get the time to release in seconds. Five seconds away, the bomb begins to, the marker begins to fall down. And we press and hold as it falls through. Now though, once the bomb is 20 seconds from impact, the laser will automatically come on. So we can see there we've got 10 seconds to impact. I just fly to make sure the TGP can maintain line of sight and double check that L is flashing the whole time. And there we go, direct hit on that truck. Well, that's all there really is to employing laser guided bombs in CCRP mode with the use of the targeting pod. If you have any questions, please do leave them down below. Otherwise, I hope to catch you in the next uh, video. Until then, I hope you all take care of yourselves and one another. Cheers.